Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? I hope you are doing well and healthy, right? So if you are not a developer, just skip this video and come back with uh, to watch other video. But if you are a developer, it doesn't matter Java or a .NET or a, a JavaScript or a full stack, doesn't matter, this video is for you. In last video, I explained certain fundamental concept, which is you must know in uh, how that JavaScript engine works, right? So today, I'm going to show you that in visual. I'm going to visualize that and show you and explain you in further detail how those work, right? So uh, if, you if you see here, you can see uh, I have an exact identical program I demonstrated in the last video, right? In the last video, I demonstrated on the paper. Today, I'm going to really demonstrate that. So this is how it works. So I have this program and I'm going to run this in the browser, all right? So I'm using Chrome here and if I go to uh, source and you can see uh, this is my program, right? I have put a br uh, break on the very first line, right? So if you don't know how to uh, use the developer console, then uh, find some videos on YouTube, you can find enough. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this program, all right? So when I run this program, you can see I stopped at line number one, all right? So here, you can see, I have a one uh, a section called call stack, right? So there, there you have anonymous. Also, you have something called scope. In the scope, you can see the variable A, right? So variable A, and also you, you have variable B here, and also you have ans and ans too. You can see all these variables are value set to undefined. Why? Last video I explained just before it execute, before the execution phase, JavaScript engine perform a creation phase, right? During the creation phase, what it does is in that phase, it go through entire program and does three things, right? If you don't remember what those three things are, go back and watch the previous video, right? So now that has happened in this particular script, right? So because we stop at line number one. So that's why you can see all these variables, right? Also, you can see here add, right? Add is one our function, right? So if you expand this, you can see here, this is ex in, uh, exactly my function, right? And also we discussed something called scope chaining, right? And I'm, I'm going to uh, go to that section later. So for now, you can see this. Right, but you will not find this num1, num2, and any of these variables do, uh, within this program, right? Within this uh, scope, you won't see, right? So, if you want to see, um, m, n, right? So, you don't see any of those, right? So, now I'm going to put a break here, right? And also break here, right? So, I'm going to go one more step. Right, so now you can see A is assigned to 10. Why? Because we are running on execution phase, but still B is undefined. So now B will assign to 20. Yes. So now what happens is it goes here, ans, right? So don't uh, misdirect by it is coming from here. No. What happens is it came line number 7 and it, it, uh, it's calling the invoking this function. So now it's important you can see in the call stack we it create other function called add. Right? So now what happened, right? So if you go to go uh, scope again, I go here, now you can see these num1 and num2 created say in the local scope. It is not in the global scope, right? If you see here, you have two scopes now, local scope and the global scope. That is what I explained. Whenever you invoke a function, right? So it create this uh, uh, function scope, right? Uh, the new execution context, and it does those three things again, right? Create the activation object, define the um, uh, scope chain, and also de determine the, uh, this, right? So now, if I execute one more line, because of this return is being called, it will destroy this uh, stack, right? And it's handing over back to this arrow, will be handing over back to anonymous, right? So let's see, I just execute this. So now you can see the newly created add 
frame from the call stack is destroyed and the pointer handed over back to Anonymous, right? So now you will see here in the global scope, the local scope has gone, right? The global scope, right? Now you have answers assigned, right? So now if I go one more line, so now it is calling with these two values. First time it called with the variables, now it's called with the values. So now we can say num1, uh, num2 is 5 and 15, right? It's in the local space again. If you go back here, you will see add frame again created. So if you go uh, one more time, now it's written being called, the add is destroyed, right? So now I hope you understand how this works. But to do, uh, demonstrate this further, I'm going to create two more functions. Function add to, right? It's just empty function, right? And also function add three, it's again empty function. Function add four, again it's empty function, right? So what I'm going to do is add will call add two, right? So add two will call add three, right? So add three will call add four, right? I'm not going to put explicit return statements, right? So here I'm going to say return, right? So this is this is it, right? So now let's go back and refresh our page so it will reflect all our changes. To make it easy, visualize, so I'm going to add the break statement within the every single function, right? So now pay your attention on the call stack, right? So now you can see, I go here, I go here. I'm not going to uh, show you this uh, scope because you know, of, of course, uh, we know how that works. Okay, uh, it's good that we expand the scope. So you can see now all the functions are here, right? Because during the creation phase, it initialize all these variables with uh, undefined and also all the functions, but it won't take function expressions, right? I'll show that too. So now you can see we are going to call the add, right? So now it create the local scope and we call, oh, didn't we put, oh, sorry, we didn't put, a, we forgot to put the break here, right? So that's fine now. Right, so now on top of the add, in a global execution context, you have add, now you have add two, right? So when I execute one more line, it will create add three frame, right? See, if I execute one more step, it will get add four frame. So now add four here, line number 16, we are going to call the return, right? So the question is what you expect. Yes, correct. It will remove this add four frame from the stack and go the pointer to the add two, we'll see. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In, in the return statement. So now it remove the add two. So now here we have now one more line. Add two. Uh, three is gone. Now one more line. Add two is gone. Now we call the return. Add is gone, and then we go back to the anonymous, right? So if you want to see again, right? So let's see. Uh, it will first go through the because I put the breakpoint only here. Right, so now I put the breakpoint to the add two. So now you will see very clearly one more time add two, which is I mean the add function, right? So one more line, add two, one more execution, add three, one more execution, add four, and then I'm coming back at four gone, at three gone, at two gone, and then at gone, right? So that is how execution stack works, right? So now what I'm going to do is, right? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove these functions, right? So I'm going to remove these functions and I'm going to call add again from here, right? I'm going to call add again. That means I'm going to call, okay, let's remove these add functions as well. Okay, so just keep this, right? From here, I'm going to create new function right function uh, new uh, let's say function one right within that function one i'm going to create a function one again right for function one right so that means this will create a stack of law problem right 
So let's go back here. I'm going to refresh this. Right, so now I'm going to put the break on the function one. Here, we'll see what happened. Okay, we didn't invoke the function one. Right, so it's my fault. So after all this, I'm going to call function one. Right? So now I'm going to refresh this again. And I don't want breakpoints here, but I want a breakpoint here. Right, so I'm going to directly go here, function one, right? So when it come here, it create function one, right? So now we again invoke function one, again invoke function one. You can you can see it repeatedly creating the same frame. It's not the same frame actually. It created a new frame in the stack. Why? Because the new frame in the sense new context in the um, stack. Why? Because we keep uh, invoking same function. But if you directly execute this, right? So you will get error saying, see, maximum call stack size exceeded, right? So that means we created a problem. That means now our uh, stack was completely filled. Okay, so here there is a one interesting thing to discuss how let keyword work with this, right? Because in the ECMA uh, new uh, specification, they introduced something called let keyword and how let keyword work with this but that is for other video because we have to discuss about hoisting in order to get that explained right so stay tuned make sure you watch the next video as well if you're not subscribed yet please go ahead and subscribe and share this video uh, on your social media platform and follow my instagram and facebook as well right so let's stay, stay in touch stay safe take care